right, another little movie on Smart Flag 4. Trying to get this to where you can see the meter as well as the sensors. I think that'll be readable. Anyhow, we'll let it run a few minutes here and see what happens. We have the 50 yard rimfire cable assembly out, five sensors set up as you would use them in the field. Have very mild winds, anywhere from nothing up to about two or three mile an hour, according to the Kestrel. Everything appears to be functioning as intended. I'm running an 85% weighting on the sensors. In other words, the first sensor is full value. The next one is 85% of that first one. The third one is 85% of the se second one. The fourth one is 85% of the third one, etc. That generally seems to be about right for a rim fire at 50 yards based on uh, the other smart flag types. We're trying to get something that will beat Smart Flag 1, which was the string and strain gauge system, which was accurate to roughly plus or minus a half of a tenth of a minute of angle under the ideal condition for it, which was uh, obviously a crosswind. Smart Flag 2 was a probe only system. Its accuracy under ideal conditions was probably plus or minus a tenth of a minute at best, and that's probably stretching it. Smart Flag 3 coupled up this vein sensor with that probe, and it was never ever evaluated with a good accurate center fire gun. And this is Smart Flag 4, which is generating a signal based on wind speed and feeding it through the angle sensor to give us a uh, signal based on speed of the wind and angle of the wind. Very mild winds. This thing should operate reliably down to about one mile per hour with total linearity up to the speed of which destroys the sensors. The system is capable of registering 350 mile an hour winds, but I don't think the things will stand up in that kind of wind and more than likely be destroyed. But it should cover the range of winds we normally shoot in quite well. Anything less than one mile an hour, the, the accuracy of the gun is far outweighs the ability to detect changes in the wind anyhow. Once you get below two mile an hour, winds, you know, any idiot can read the wind until it changed. You're really, really looking at what the accuracy of the gun is at that point. And then and that could be rest related, scope related, bench related, whatever, you know. You're looking at how that how that system, shooting system, is actually functioning. But when the winds start coming up, particularly when they get mixed conditions, some going left, some going right, that's where the smart flag comes into its own. The ability to weight each sensor in relation to the others theoretically should give you the proper wind deflection no matter what the wind is doing with this system. Let it run a little while here and see what's what's happening. 
Wish we'd have a little more wind to play with. And we got zero reading even though we got a little cup reading because all the vein sensors were basically pointing null. Now they're pointing a little right to left giving us a negative number. <coughs> got some far sensors overriding the front sensors because of the speed and angle. There's actually a little push of wind, probably about two mile an hour. on these sensors now. Oh yeah, come on baby, give us some more wind. There we go, coming on up. Of course it's mostly a null, so it's coming right down the line at us. Love to see what that was doing on a crosswind. Meter quit. <laughs> it times out after a while. You can deactivate that feature, I think, but I, I, I use the computer software with this system. But this is to demonstrate that the system is fully accurate, just with a plain, ordinary voltmeter. Everyone thinks the computer is doing all the figuring out. No, that's not the case. The smart flag sensors are, and how the user sets those values on those sensors is what determines how, how this system works as far as accuracy goes. Some people believe the far flags are more important. Some people believe the front flags are more important. Some people don't have a clue. Well, this gives the individual user a means of tailoring to whatever his belief is and then he can prove it to himself whether he's right or wrong. But I'll tell you right now, it is the front flags that have the most influence. Peculiar quirk though, uh, there's a different curve in that relationship between a sonic, subsonic and a supersonic projectile. The rim fires have a much more uniform uh, rate of uh, wind drift per segment than in a supersonic bullet such as a PPC. That was a little unusual but if you look at most ballistics programs they will show you that effect is indeed the way it works. So something about going supersonic alters the wind drift per segment versus subsonic. Yeah we got about 10 minutes there. Let it run another 20 seconds and see what it looks like. 